Hi, everybody. Mr. McNichol here. I'm glad you folks are joining me for the last class we're going to have in 1302. Well, here is the lesson and the module. Ready? Right there. Okay, can you see that? Module 7, Lesson 5, Classical Satire. The lesson is going to be there. There is a little script for you to download and read. I'm going to give you some background here. I'm going to tell you what they're going to be, what you're going to be doing to get your last 10 points in this little bitty assignment. Okay? I forbid any of you to panic, get upset. Oh my gosh, I can't do this. Yes, three to five sentences. Even if you're not 100% sure what they're talking about there, I'm going to give you some context right now about both classical satire and the specific play you're going to be reading from, okay? Now, classical satire, it's from the classical period, okay? From about 800 B.C. to 400 A.D., okay? Those are what we're looking at during what they call the classical period nowadays. Now, in ancient Greece, you saw all three of the main kinds of satire we looked at. Horatian, which might be just kind of pick on an individual for the sake of fun more than anything else, but also to teach a lesson. You had Juvenalia, okay, which, although more done in the Roman era, would end up being pretty much without humor. Okay, that's Juvenalia, 1984. Okay, Fahrenheit 451, that's satire without humor. Okay, this is evil. Don't follow it. And then the third type was Manipian, okay, where they made fun of a societal okay, view of things. Rather, And all three of them tried to basically make a fun event of things. Okay, Now, then you had parody that really wasn't trying specifically to change things necessarily. Uh, parody is just trying to have fun. Okay, Well, once again, in your lesson... Module 7, Lesson 5, The Classical Period. You're going to be looking at a play from the Classical Period. Okay? It is a bit of Horatian. It's a bit of Manipian. Okay? The play is called The Birds okay? by a fellow named Aristophanes, okay? depending on how you pronounce it. Here's the plot. Two guys are basically thinking about how much they hate living in one of the ancient Greek cities. Remember, this is several centuries, okay? B.C., okay? Long, long time ago. And one of them has a great idea. He says, let's start our own city. We will build it in the clouds. We'll dress ourselves up like birds, and we will build our city in the clouds, and we will call it Cloud Cuckoo Land. Yes, for those of you who like animated films, that's where they got the name for the place in the Lego movie. Okay, Cloud Cuckoo Land is their perfect city. And the two guys, okay, Apops, and I forget the other guy's name, but that's okay. Um, in Cloud Cuckoo Land, they have the idea... That, oh, Piss the Terrace, excuse me, that's his name, yes, okay? Piss the Terrace and Apops, they, they found this city, and Piss the Terrace, he's kind of the smart version. Apops is kind of the goofy, you know, fall guy fella, but Piss the Terrace has a great idea. He says, we'll build this city. Hey, you know what? When people pray to the gods, those prayers have to go up. Well, here's what we're going to do. We will tax the prayers as they go through our city. If an army goes through someone's city, they've got to pay a tax to the king of the city, don't they? And if the gods don't pay the tax, we will starve them since the gods live on prayers. That's how they view the Greek gods at that point. Anybody who knows anything about Greek mythology can you see how this plan could possibly go wrong? Yeah, yeah. 
Zeus doesn't really put up with people messing with his stuff or his girlfriends or his kids or anything else like that. Okay? So what happens? Well, before the gods end up basically thumping them into powder, something interesting happens. Pithoteris and Apops, they build their city, their citizens are birds, they are getting rich by taxing the prayers of people as they're going up into the sky, passing through their city on their way to the gods. But their perfect city starts to become just like the city that they left. When uh, Pithoteris tries to build his palace, suddenly a bird shows up with a set of calipers and a little tablet and a pencil. And he says, I'm sorry, you can't build your palace there. Your cloud isn't up to code. What? Pithoteris beats up that bird. Who thought of a bird becoming a building inspector? Then another bird shows up with a bag of money. Hey, you know what I am? I'm a bird prophet of the gods. If you give me money, I'll give you a good prophecy. But if you don't give me money, I think the, I'm going to make the gods curse you. Pithoteris says, I came up here to get away from people like you. Smack, smack, smack. That guy's gone too. Pithoteris and Apops decide, we're going to build a wall. That's it. We'll build a wall to keep all these crazies out. Okay. That doesn't go over well either, okay, for various reasons. What is being satirized here? Okay, well, if you're actually listening to the lecture, I hope you are, one of the things that's being satirized is this. Okay? Number one, you can't run away from your problems. They will follow you. Number two, humans are inherently, this is what was believed by Pythoteris and Apops and Greek culture in general, humans can understand the idea of perfection, but we cannot, for whatever reason, reach it. Okay? Whenever we try to build that perfect castle in the clouds, guess what's going to happen? All the things that make us human are going to follow us and make it flawed. They built what they thought would be the perfect city without all the kooky, annoying things that follow with people. But guess what? The very birds start saying, build your cloud up to code. Hey, pay the prophet or he's going to call down the gods' curses on you. Okay. Maybe even guys will show up and say, hey, pay me and I'll make sure the laws are built that will end up favoring you. I will make sure that the king of cloud cuckoo land gives decrees, but you've got to give me money to do it. Corruption follows as well. That's how this kind of satire appears. So what kind of satire could this be? Well, there's a lot of goofiness, so it's probably not juvenile, uh, juvenilia. But you could argue it's horation because you have several kinds of people who are being made fun of. Okay? The guys who make weights and measures. Who are you to decide how much this rock weighs or how much it's worth? Um, the guys who are actually professional prophets, who really aren't, who aren't actually being talked to by the gods. They just pretend they are so they can get easy money. Okay? Uh, the kinds of people who are just busybodies, telling people, you can't do that unless you give me money. Your, built, your cloud is not up to code. Okay, Those kinds of things. And you can try to do things like build a wall and whatever, build a new city. But those problems will always continue to follow you. Okay? Does that make sense? So, uh, yeah, that is essentially the lecture. Lasted just shy of 10 minutes. Okay? Now, what you guys are going to do is I have included a short section of a script okay, from the birds. Read through it as best you can, and just in three to five sentences, a little paragraph, tell me what they're satirizing here. What are they making fun of? Okay? Do the best you can. If you give me a good case, you'll get the 10 points, even if you're wrong. Sound good, everybody? Okay, once again, like I told the class today, before we ended, uh, this has been a great month. I've really enjoyed teaching all of you. I'm really glad, and if uh, TCC told me, hey, Mr. McNichol, you're going to be doing that same crew. 
uh, for teaching next semester. Great. I would say that would be awesome. Okay. Uh, folks in there always managed to put a smile on my face, even though we were all tired, and I don't think any of us liked having to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. But again, uh, no one gave grief, and it seemed like just what everybody was there to learn and learn how to do things. So good job for you guys. I really appreciate you, and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of the summer. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.